Another new filament. This time we've got some matter hackers. This is the second matter hackers we've used. Translucent yellow. I was planning on using this uh, Prusa yellow for my project, but this is got this is kind of special. It's pretty expensive and it's got these gold flecks in it. So I have another idea for this one. I'm gonna save that for that other project. And we have been using this uh, for translucent PTG. We've been using this Yogi stuff, which has been printing really well. Uh, but they don't make yellow, so that's what you run into sometimes. If you have a project that needs multiple different colors, sometimes one manufacturer doesn't make all those colors. I did pick Yogi because it made most of the manu most of the colors I needed. Now this is their build quality, which is not you know not the highest quality, but uh, uh, it says it's uh, 230 to 255. So we're probably going to end up putting it at 240, like everything else. Hopefully this will work like the other. PTGs we have in bed temperature 55 to 70. So probably going to end up at 240 and 70, which we've done for everything else. But we'll go ahead and do a uh, temperature tower anyway. So it has a pretty good vacuum on it. Not perfect. It's not like some of the ones we've had. Uh, but it does have a nice uh, desiccant pack inside. Open this up. I have to hold my breath when I open these up because there's a bunch of fumes come out. Let me air it out a little bit. Okay, I got the door open. All right, so there's the color. It looks like it'll work perfectly for what we need. And we're going to weigh this, see what we got. Fifty grams. So twelve twenty six. Let's see. Yeah, twelve twenty six. So this reel is pretty solid. So it'll be a little heavier than some of the other ones. Like this one has all these cutouts. So this one's probably lighter than this one. But at twelve twenty six, it should be a, a one kilogram. Don't really know until we finish the reel, obviously. But it should be what we what, what it should work out for getting all that we paid for. Here's our new and improved uh, side loader setup. So we've got these uh, side arms that I uh, beefed up. So you can see that in another video I printed out, I showed how I printed it. I increased the, <coughs> the thickness of this effect, uh, section because this uh, little area right here cracked on both of these on my other one, well, the first ones I printed. These are the original ABS uh, spacers I printed, and um, this this axle is also printed out of PTG, silver PTG like these. This is another ABS spacer. So this re this axle could be shorter, but this is the project I had, so I went and printed it this way. I thought it would be the right diameter. <clears throat> For some reels, it might be they're they're thicker, but so far uh, they aren't too bad. Now this is an interesting. Uh, difference from other manufacturers to so hold the end of the reel they actually uh, used tape used uh, packing tape which is not the most convenient thing so I guess they put two on here so they release this one the one that's holding the end of the reel release this one then the reel the end of the reel won't go anywhere and then it, you can uh, control it so it doesn't get uh, doesn't get tangled I guess that's the idea I don't have to cut this off probably because it seems like it's. I don't have to cut this because it's uh, hard to get off here. And actually, the end of the plastic goes under the, uh, the end of the packing tape goes under the label here. So we're gonna have to cut this, which is fine. Uh, we'll just cut the uh, filament right here, and then we'll peel this off. All right. So for this setup, we want the filament coming up over the top. And then going into our little tube here that we stuck into one of the uh, grid, grid uh, <coughs> openings in the sides. So then we we put this in like this, and then we put this other spacer on this side. You could just put it in here without any spacers, but it's a lot more stable if you have something up against the sides of the reel. So this is, reel is a lot more stable. It won't wobble side to side as much if you have these spacers. So I recommend using those. That way you can print your 
acts a little bit longer than you need, and um, uh, you can handle different widths of reels without having to worry about different axles and so forth. So this is coming over the top. So we're just going to cut this here and keep control. We, 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 don't, we don't, never want to let go of this. And then once we get it um, fed in, I'll get rid of this extra little piece here. Once we feed it through this little tube, we're not going anywhere for now. All right, so that's nicely in there. I'm a little bit loose here, but it, again, it can't get tangled if you never let go of the end of the reel. That's the secret. <laughs> Just hold on to that. All right, we're gonna cut this off. Cut this tape off. We don't wanna peel off the label. So this system is okay. It seems secure. It's pretty straight. It's pretty simple for them to do. It's not as convenient for us, but uh, I guess that's okay. I don't think I've shown my startup procedure much lately, so I'll go ahead and show it now. So we preheated the extruder and the bed to our temperatures we want. So 240, which is the start of our temperature tower, and 70 degrees C for the bed. And then, first thing we want to do before we go to the filament is do a uh, level, bed level. And I always make sure after I'm done printing for the day to get all of the to get all the filament out of the head by using the uh, little pusher, pusher rod here that gets all the filament out and then once I've got it out once I got uh, and, and once I've got it out I use this uh, brass brush to get any residual filament off the nozzle. Since they're now using a, um, a nickel plated nozzle, this doesn't really cause any wear on the nozzle. The, the other uh, brass nozzle that came with it, I think that was causing a little bit of wear on the nozzle, which is not the greatest thing in the world. But the, the nickel plated one seems to be, uh, it doesn't seem to be affected by this brass. So this is nickel plated brass nozzle and this is a brass brush. So the brass against the nickel, the nickel is much stronger than this. So it's not going to affect it at least anytime soon. So now that it's all uh, heated up, we're going to start a lower procedure. And, I, and I've been using these index cards. It comes with a uh, plastic card, which I can't find right now, which is okay. But after a while it gets all beat up. So now with these index cards, I can, um, if it, it, it gets worn out eventually because you're scraping it a little bit, or some filament gets on there or whatever, uh, then uh, you can just easily replace this. So this is, the, this is what I use for uh, checking the gap between the nozzle and the filament. And after, or after a long period, a, long, a lot of prints, you'll get really good at knowing what kind of resistance you need. You need a little bit of resistance, but not too much. And then once I have that, then we've got to end of our, our filament here. We're going to feed it up through the other guide tube and up to the top. And then it'll go in the top of the uh, uh, print head here. So that's our startup procedure. And uh, it's been working for me really consistently so far. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.